Hello there, my name is Keith Rome, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make those cool glass button effects that you see on your Vista desktop. And as an example, here I have a button that's been created, and you can see it's got a nifty little glass highlight at the top of the button. And when I mouse over it, it's got a glow that, that appears. The tools that I'm going to be using are Visual Studio 2008 and Microsoft Expression Blend. And I'm going to start out using Microsoft Expression Blend to create a new Silverlight project. And to get started here, I'm going to click the File menu and select New Project. And I'm going to create a new Silverlight application. The first thing I'm going to do is add a rectangle, which will serve as the basis for my glass button. and I'm going to go to the properties window and I'm going to round the corners a little bit. I think four pixels should do it. I'm also going to set the stroke thickness to zero for now. I'm going to clear out the fill and stroke properties. Now after creating that rectangle and setting the basic properties I'm going to right click it, copy it, then I'm going to paste it twice. And that's because my button has three different layers to it. I'm going to select all three of those rectangles. And I'm going to right click and group them all into a new canvas. So this canvas that was created is going to become my button control. So if I first select that new canvas, so that, and I'm going to double click it, and you'll notice it is now highlighted in yellow. What this means is that I'm now editing in the context of that container. But first of all, I'm going to give this canvas a name. I'm just going to call it Button. I'm also going to set the cursor to a hand. Now that that's taken care of, I'm going to select the very first rectangle. And the first thing I'm going to do is give this a name. I'm going to call this Base Color. And I'm going to give it a fill set it to a solid color, solid color brush and I can make this any color I want but I'm going to start with black. Now I'm going to select the second rectangle and for this rectangle I'm going to give it a I'm first going to name it I'm going to name it glow and I'm going to give it a fill but instead of a solid color brush this time it's going to be a gradient brush and specifically it's going to be a radial gradient. So what I need to do th then is actually adjust the positioning of the gradient and I can do that quite easily by selecting the brush transform tool. So I'll select that tool and now I can make the actual highlight a little bit larger vertically and I can also move it down a little bit. like so. Now what I need to do is I need to actually adjust the gradient stops. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the first gradient stop and now I can select its color. Right now it's, it's black and that's just the default value but what I want to do is set that first stop to a powder blue. So I'm going to pick blue over here on the slider and then pick a nice sort of not quite teal but powder blue and then I'm going to select the second gradient and for this gradient I just want it to be transparent so I'm going to slide the alpha value to zero. So now we have a nice glow effect for our hover and lastly we need to adjust the opacity. I'm going to leave that at zero percent for now. Now that's it for the glow effect so let's take care of the glass so to take care of the glass effect I'm going to select the very last rectangle and I'm going to name it glass. I'm also going to give it a gradient fill. This time however I want it to be a linear gradient. Now the default linear gradient goes from left to right and you can see that from the arrow that's drawn but I don't want it to go left to right. Instead I want it to go bottom to top. And to do that, I first need to make sure that I'm using the brush transform tool 
So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate this transform, and I can do that by moving my mouse close to the ends of this arrow, and you can see they turn into a little partial circle symbol. So clicking one of the endpoints, I can then drag and rotate this. However, the gradient start and finish are quite a bit outside of my rectangle at this point. So I'm going to click those ends and move them. I'll move the end as well. So for this glass effect, the very first thing that I want to do is set the first stop to transparent because the bottom of the button I want to show through this. This is the top layer of the button. So I'm going to click that first gradient stop and set its alpha to zero. I'm going to click the second gradient stop, the one at the right end of the gradient bar. And I'm going to make sure that it's set to 100% white and not transparent at all, which it already is. Now, this actually is looking fairly decent, but we can make it look better. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a couple of additional um, gradient midpoints. Uh, so the first one that we're going to add is going to be, for, we're going, what we can do is we can click any place on this gradient bar and it'll add another midpoint at that position and so by clicking at about 60%, you'll see that it created another um, gradient stop. But now we're going to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to drag this gradient stop that was just created up to about 65 to 70% of the width of the bar. And so what that does is it tightens up that bright area at the top. Now I'm going to click and add another gradient stop close to about 20 percent and then I'm going to drag that to be just a few percent below that last stop that was created. Now we see the glass effect and what what causes that are these two stops that are close together so we have a slow transition that quickly speeds up and then the glass highlight itself is a little bit wider and if you look at the button you can see that the last thing we're going to do is set the opacity to a reasonable value. And I'm going to pull this down to about 80%. So now we have a fairly good looking but glass button that's got all the plumbing that we need. I'm going to save. And now I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio and open that project and if we look at the code there's a few things that are created for us by the project creation wizard but just to show where we're at I'll go ahead and hit F5 to run and there's our basic button so let's wire up that hover effect first of all And the first thing that I'll do is I'll attach an event to the button itself, the top level canvas of our control. And if we scroll down, we can see there is a mouse enter event. And we can add a new event handler. And I'm just pressing tab to use the default names. So when the mouse enters this button control, I want to set the glow opacity to about 80%, so it shows up fairly well. I'll add another event handler. Double tab again to get the default event handler code done for me. And when you're, the mouse leaves the button, we'll set the opacity back to zero. Let's test that out by hitting F5. And now we can see our glow as we mouse over. That's pretty cool. That's pretty much what the Vista Arrow taskbar does for its buttons.